Hey, what's up, guys? I know I promised you a couple of weeks ago you'd get my Big 12 picks every week on the channel. Last week, there was a, a little blip on the radar. There was a little bump in the road, and that was the fact that I couldn't talk. I lost my voice. So you did not get those picks. I have them for you here today. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do. I talk conference realignment and college football every day on this channel and try to give the Big 12 a voice. What you're going to hear is a segment from my radio show where I make my picks every single week. So you'll hear both myself and my producer, Mitch Fortner. We dubbed the segment John in Vegas. That's the bit. So you may hear a little bit of that mixed in there. But uh, it's not been a good year so far with the picks. You guys will probably wind up making fun of me. But let me know what you think in the comments. Am I totally off base? What is your favorite game of the week? And who are you taking to cover in the Big 12 this week? Without further ado, here are my picks for week four. 11 a.m., FS1, Amon G. Carter Stadium in Fort Worth. TCU is a nine and a half point favorite. Mitch, they are battling for a skillet made of iron. It is the battle for the iron skillet. Do you have TCU minus nine and a half or not? You know, John, um, the quarterback for SMU is Tanner Mordecai. And I'm just, the Mordecai name just always reminds me of the movie Raising Arizona. The guy, like the kid throws a bunch of crap against the wall and the guy's like, you better watch yourself, Mordecai. So, SMU and TCU both undefeated, but nine and a half? Give me SMU plus nine and a half. I agree. I want the points there. I want the points. TCU played a closer game with Cal than they should have. Um, they are coming off of a bye, but, like, I don't feel great about TCU right now blowing anybody out. I'm going to need to see more, so give me the points. 11 o'clock on ABC. DKR Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin. The Longhorns are nine-point home favorites. I assume riding Casey Thompson now, but Texas Tech 3-0. I'm going to take the Red Raiders. I'm going to take the Red Raiders. Now, I don't like placing my faith in Matt Wells, but Tech, I think, is playing with a lot of confidence now. Much like K-State, they had a really nice win to open the season over Houston. They struggled to beat an FCS team in Week 2. They rebounded by playing much better in week three. Of course, their opponent, though, was Florida International. So we don't know a ton about Tech. But we've seen Texas get pushed around already this year. They're still trying to figure out what their identity is, what they're doing with the quarterbacks. That feels to me like a lot of uncertainty to be taking Texas to win by double digits over a Big 12 team with a pulse at this moment, getting used to the new head coach. So because of the uncertainty, I'm going to go with Tech. I need to climb back up here in the uh, in the record in the standings. So... You know what? Uh, you know Texas a nice bounce back against Rice. Texas Tech. I, I'm not. I'm just not quite sure what to think. Like this is going to be like the true test, I think, of what Texas Tech is really all about. Because after Houston, they didn't really play anybody, and um, their FCS opponent. I can't remember who it was, but I don't think Tech looked their best there. So uh, Texas plus uh, minus nine. I I just got a hunch on the Longhorns on this one. All right. We disagree on that one. 2.30 on Fox at McLean Stadium in Waco. Iowa State, the 14th-ranked Cyclones, go on the road to 3-0 Baylor. Speaking of teams that are red hot that we don't know much about, that would be Baylor. They have crushed Texas Southern and Kansas each of the last two weeks after a season-opening win at Texas State by 9. I actually am going to take Iowa State here, which goes against most of what you would prognosticate that I would do. But I do feel like last week was a get-right game, specifically for their offense against UNLV. I think Iowa State is going to play with more confidence. They typically do this, have this slow start at the beginning of the year thing and start to find their footing in conference play. I just I don't buy what Baylor has done based on the level of competition enough. So I'll take Iowa State by 10 in Waco in this game. Well, you mentioned that Iowa State op always opens up the season slow. But, John, Iowa State typically opens up Big 12 play slow. They've lost four of their last five Big 12 openers. Their, oh, win, that? their win was last year. And in one of those losses was a road trip to Baylor, and I believe that was two years ago, and Brock Purdy was the quarterback. Baylor was a better team then. But, you know, Baylor's three, and I'm going to give him credit. Bohannon, he's looked solid. You know what? Because Iowa State typically starts slow in Big 12 play, I'm not saying they lose, uh, but, um, well, you know what? Give me Baylor plus seven in this action. Road game, Baylor fans will be pumped, won't they? They will. I'm sure that will be very lively. I'm sure that will be. 
Uh, next up on the ACC Network at 3 o'clock, Kansas and Duke. Not on the hardwood. They will be playing football, much to the chagrin of each of these athletic departments. Duke is a 16-point favorite. Look, last week I took Kansas plus 17 against Baylor. Learn my lesson. Kansas is still not in trustable territory with any point spread. They wound up losing the game by 38 to Baylor. So I'm just I'm going to take Duke. I think Duke will cover. I can't Kansas. You lost your trust privileges. I do not trust you this week. Well, in personnel wise, KU is already shorthanded, but they lost Velton Gardner because he's now in the transfer portal and he's the returning leading rusher from last year, even though he's barely carrying the ball in the first three games of the year. But KU has already had a ton of concerns before that, where they're more trustworthy players on offense is already gone now. So, yeah, Duke, I'm taking the minus 16. And, uh, by the way, KU and Duke have met 13 times on the hardwood, and Duke leads that series 8-5. to five. Another factor in this game, John. Big time. J.J. Redick just retired. We'll see how that factors in uh, as well this weekend. 6.30 on ABC, Memorial Stadium in Norman. Oklahoma is a 17-point home favorite against West Virginia. That, that line seems awful high to me based on what we have seen out of Oklahoma and West Virginia getting hot, but it – I say West Virginia getting hot. I mean, they, they, they had a nice win last week over Vautech. I, I My gut would tell me take West Virginia and take the points, but this feels like one of those sneaky Vegas lines where I'm like, I disagree with that line. Vegas knows something. It worked for me last week with West Virginia, by the way, going with the Mountaineers. So I'm going to play it the opposite way here, and because this feels like a weird line to me, I'm going to lean into it and say, oh, you minus the 17. The Sooners will jump out and win by three TDs. You know what? Oklahoma has just played too many close games, and West Virginia has played too many close games for me to say that Oklahoma just – they just find what hasn't been going right, they correct it, and they're going to blow out West Virginia. It just does not have that feeling to me, and 17 points is just too much, so give me West Virginia.